start the recording. Okay, so as I said, this is the um, VISTA Community Core Supervisor Training. And today we are going to do a brief overview of VISTA. I know this will be repeat information for a lot of you, but um, for in some cases, the person who submits the application is not necessarily the person who's doing the supervising. So we wanna make sure that everyone kind of has the broader context of what VISTA is. Um, we're gonna talk about the conditions and benefits of VISTA. And then we'll go over supervisor roles along with the role of Iowa and Minnesota Campus Compact. And then we're gonna get into some pretty in-depth um, logistics and idea generation around recruitment also, since that'll be what we are diving into next. Uh, so just to give everyone a little context, this is the first year where we're starting off from application to throughout the whole process where we are Iowa and Minnesota together. And so this is a list of all of our 2021 host sites. Um, long list, we have a mix of both nonprofit organizations as well as uh, college campuses. I'll hold it up here for a minute so you can take a look if this is of interest to you. And so what is VISTA? Uh, VISTA is, stands for Volunteers in Service to America. It is uh, a branch of the Corporation for National and Community Service, also known as DNCS, and it is the capacity building arm of AmeriCorps. Capacity building is sort of in, is the other, side of service as opposed to direct service. So we'll, you'll hear us talking about capacity building a lot because it's a pretty key component of VISTA and it's important that our VISTAs are doing capacity building work. Uh, that's what we were looking for on the VISTA assignment descriptions, what we're looking for in project ideas, etc. So we'll talk a little bit more about that too. Um, these are full-time service positions. It's a one year and then our projects in this program go up to three years. And VISTAs will begin in the summer of 2020, either July 20th or August 3rd, and then they will serve 12 months. Um, they will serve full time. Um, generally, that's anywhere from 32 to 40 hours. We have three focus areas in our program. There's Health Core, Education Core, and the Opportunity Core. The Health Core um, is so here are some things that you can do with the health course. So college student basic needs, the VISTA projects will support um, currently enrolled college students basic needs, including but not limited to healthcare access, food access, housing assistance, mental health support. And then we also support community campus partnerships that are focusing on improving health outcomes in low income populations. Education Corps has a um, focus on recruiting low-income students into college and university programs or institutions or establishing programs or services that retain low-income college students and again or supporting campus community partnerships that focus on improving education outcomes in low-income populations. And then finally, they have the Opportunity Core, which uh, focuses on connecting homeless or near homeless college students to community services, establishing programs or services, aiding low income college students and things like tax preparation, employment skills. And we also, again, support community campus partnerships, focusing on improving economic opportunity outcomes in low income populations. So you'll see in all three slides, we talk about building organizational capacity in a way that is sustainable. So something that goes beyond the VISTA project itself and will last at the organization. Expand, enhance, or develop programs. And then uh, again, using campus community partnerships as strategy. So as an organization, that's the mission of Iowa and Minnesota Campus Compact. So that is kind of a um, focus area of our program. So in terms of capacity building, what this does can't do um, is direct, no direct service and no displacement of a worker. So that means um, not coordinating ongoing programs, performing core organizational functions. So the things that are already happening in your organization that folks are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, this just shouldn't come in and then replace that work. Um, this is an important thing that we will be looking for again on the VISTA assignment descriptions. And our job is sort of to interpret some of that for CNCS, between CNCS and our sites. And so we'll sometimes come back and say, hey, this, this activity on a volunteer or on the VAD uh, kind of implies displacement of a worker. Can we reword it? Can we talk about if the VISTA should be, is gonna be doing this? What kind of work is this actually going to require? 
and talk through those things with you. Um, so things that include direct service would be like staffing the front desk, helping clients complete forms, scheduling appointments, um, scheduling meetings, that kind of thing, uh, or teaching classes, doing the tutoring, doing the mentoring, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, what they can do is recruit and train volunteers to do these things. They can develop partnerships that support that work. They can develop systems and they can do research and they can train. Uh, so those are all things that we see very often um, in VISTA projects and on the ads. Here are some more um, ideas about what you might have your VISTAs be doing. Um, and sort of over here on the left, these are things that are okay, indirect service, some basic level things that you could ask your VISTA to do. Um, and then there's some capacity building things in the middle here. And then the very best scenario is when we can move into the sustainable work um, that will, so after the VISTA project is completed, can continue to support the organization. And I should mention that if anyone has any questions at any time, they can either, um, there's a little raise your hand button or um, just jump in at any time if you want. We also have a chat function in Zoom that you can use and we will um, respond to it that way as well. So VISTA candidates, when we're going out and recruiting members, the things that um, are required of the members, they must be at least 18 years old. They must be a US citizen, national, or legal permanent resident alien. They must pass a federal background check. They must commit to 365 days of full-time service. Um, they can uh, be in college courses or getting an education part-time and they can have outside employment. There's some like paperwork and stuff that goes along with that, but it does not, um, at one point that was not the case and this is are able to do that now uh, at the same time as they're in service. Uh, but it does have to be only kind of, you know, can't interfere with the VISTA responsibilities. So those are things, conversation you would want to have with the candidates, obviously. Um, and both of them require advance approval from the supervisor. A VISTA can't be hired by the host site organization during their term of service. So they might be hired after the fact, but not during. And there must be no religious, political, or electoral activity associated with VISTA. Some of the benefits that members uh, receive as part of their service is uh, a living allowance, which they get um, paid bi-weekly via direct deposit. Um, it's a slightly different amount between uh, Minnesota and Iowa um, in certain areas. I guess Twin City Metro area is a little higher. Um, they get an education award at the end, or they can choose to get a cash stipend, uh, which uh, is a less popular choice because it's obviously significantly different. So the difference between $6,000 and not quite $2,000. They can um, put their loans into forbearance so they don't have to be paying on their student loans, on their federal student loans during their year of service. Um, they do get a relocation allowance if they're moving more than 50 miles. Um, but that does not apply, Jacqueline, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that does not apply if they are moving um, from their home base after college. Is that right? Right. So if they're moving from college back home, that does not qualify, but in any other case, it, it does. So if they're just, you know, if they're moving from Madison to Des Moines to serve, they would get that amount. It just has to be over 50 miles. Okay. Thanks. Um, they do have a health care allowance that supplements insurance. This is not insurance, but um, they have a health care allowance and they can enroll in a VISTA health benefit. Again, not insurance. It's not as comprehensive, but it's a health benefit plan um, if they don't have insurance as, as is. Uh, they will get mileage reimbursement to cohort development days, um, which are some professional development and just networking opportunities for them. Uh, there are child care benefits, uh, depending on their income qualifications. Uh, they have um, pre-existing public benefits not affected by a VISTA living allowance. Uh, and they have quarter in-service development provided by Iowa and Minnesota Campus Compact. And then they also get 10 personal days, 10 sick days, and then host site federal holidays. So in most cases, too, so that's the 10 personal, 10 sick is like the minimum that um, VISTA offers. And then um, the host site can kind of with them to figure out those holidays and time off as well. And can I jump in quickly and just um, 
go back to the healthcare things because I think this is an important distinction to understand. There are two different um, healthcare option services. If they already have insurance, a lot of times through their parents, since they might not be 26 yet, um, they're able to also receive that $7,900 healthcare allowance which supplements the insurance. So if they have a copay or something like that, they're able to tap into that healthcare allowance, but they do need to have insurance to qualify for that. And then um, if they do not have insurance, they're able to enroll into the VISTA health benefit plan. So it's not both, it's one or the other. Um, but we've had a practice in the past, at least of encouraging folks to look at um, the state health insurance just because this health benefit plan is not a comprehensive insurance but it is an option for folks that don't have insurance uh, i should have mentioned that this is my first time giving the overview presentations and so jacqueline will be jumping in to help me out here and there <laughs> um so benefits that we um, that the site should be providing to the Vista that we expect are um, a workspace that includes a desk, a computer, phone, that the supplies that are needed to do the job that they're being asked to do, um, a supervision and guidance, and we will talk a little bit about what effective supervision looks like moving forward. Um, mileage reimbursement for any service-related travel. So the way that same way that you would um, reimburse your uh, current staff and employees, you don't need to re reimburse VISTAs for that as well. Um, we ask that they provide at least one professional development opportunity. Uh, that can look like a lot of different things, so we can talk about that if you have questions. Um, some sites do choose to offer things like housing stipends or gas cards or grocery cards or just things to help supplement the living allowance, which is pretty small, uh, and to help make it a little bit more feasible of an experience for the VISTA. Um, so that's kind of up to you all, but you cannot um, give money and can't hire for additional work. So if you do want to help supplement, it can't be in addition to the stipend, like cash or a paycheck. It needs to be in the form of um, gift cards or paying a landlord directly or paying for services and um, products directly. And for the mileage reimbursement, um, I think it's also important to note that um, I know like there are some organizations that only reimburse their uh, employees if they're traveling outside of the county or if they're traveling a certain distance. Um, VISTAs should be getting reimbursed for any and all service related travel. So even if they are driving their car two miles down the road, they should be able to submit that for reimbursement and get that approved. So it could look slightly different from the other employees, but VISTAs should be getting reimbursed for all of the travel they do. So as a site supervisor, um, your role starts with um, developing the VAD, the VISTA assignment description, which um, you all have started the process of, and we are working on kind of combing through those. And again, our job is to sort of make sure that um, the language that we use and the t activities and objectives that are included fit with the expectations of CNCS. And so we'll look through those and then be emailing you um, if there are any changes that need to be made. Oftentimes it's not content changes as much as it is just um, kind of moving them around. Um, but that document is also really helpful for the VISTAs themselves to take a look at and kind of know what you're expecting and to monitor their progress and hold one another accountable to that. Um, you're responsible for recruiting and interviewing and selecting your VISTA. Um, we'll supervise the VISTA, which includes weekly supervision meetings. And uh, we mentioned that because uh, supervising a VISTA, many, many folks are going to be supervising other staff as well. And while there's lots of things that are similar in that uh, arena of supervision, there are some differences that come with supervising a VISTA. And in part, that's just because it's such a short and quick term um, that a lot happens in a short amount of time. And we want to make sure that they can be effective during that time, which requires a little maybe more, um, more supervision than you might have with your um, current staff members. And one of the ways to do that is to do weekly meetings. 
We also have quarterly reports and then a biweekly attendance certification survey that we ask supervisors to complete. Um, the quarterly reports are checking in and then also kind of doing performance measure related things. And that attendance certification survey is really just our way of um, you, we don't have timesheets that supervisors are able to sign off on directly. And so that's just our way of saying, yes, my VISTA served this the last two weeks and they should get their paycheck. Um, we estimate the time commitment for VISTA supervision to be about 10 to 15 hours a month. And that includes sort of those weekly meetings and then doing, you know, paying attention to the emails and things that are coming from Campus Compact, um, following up with those things. Um, obviously, this can vary a lot depending on the month and depending on the person, but just as an estimate, we wanted to offer that. And it's definitely busiest during the recruitment and onboarding times. So we're coming up on recruitment. That can take a, quite a bit of time and effort um, getting candidates in to apply and then also selecting them and getting them enrolled. And then the onboarding part is obviously, as we all know, just when you start a new job, you need a lot more support. So that's the busiest time. Some keys to successful supervision. Um, again, so meeting weekly, one-to-one. -one. Uh, and during that time and throughout, you can, being a coach, so not just a supervisor, but to provide some coaching and to advocate for your VISTA. Um, and kind of including them as a um, full staff member in staff meetings and in the things that you're doing as a team. Otherwise, having to, to play, be uh, central to that, all of those things as well. Um, supporting the VISTA and meeting their personal and professional goals. And I think a lot of times what that means is also talking to them about what their personal and professional goals are and helping them to identify them if they aren't sure. Um, that's where that coaching piece comes into. Again, VISTA is a quick year, so um, it doesn't take too long before they're in that time where they have to start thinking about what's next and being um, a support system for them throughout that process is really helpful and important. Um, as I said, onboarding is a pretty key part of the process, and so that's, we, uh, CNCS asks, and we ask for an on-site orientation and training plan, um, and that can really include a lot of things that you would do, hopefully, with your um, regular staff members, um, but it's uh, just sort of a plan to say, this is how we plan to get this person ready to serve at our organization. Um, we also have a couple resources for you. So we have a supervisor manual that's from VISTA and you can find that on the VISTA campus site. There's a link in the presentation that I, link, I won't click on right now, but you can find that when we email this um, after the fact. And then we also will have a supervisor handbook coming from Iowa and Minnesota Campus Compact. Um, you may have, if you're already a site supervisor, you may have this year's version. There will be some updates to it. So we are going to send that out when it is ready. So to that end, Iowa Minnesota Campus Compact role in the VISTA experience is ultimately just management of this multi-wide, multi-statewide program. So applying for the grant each year and kind of ensuring compliance through that. We do all the reporting to CNCS. And so a lot of sometimes the questions that we're asking for in terms of reports and applications and whatnot is generally stuff that we're getting asked for from CNCS. And then we compile all that information and pass it up. Um, we offer support for site supervisors, so that includes things like these webinars um, and also um, logistical support. So when it comes to selecting the VISTA member, getting them enrolled, recruitment, that kind of stuff, um, we can offer some of the logistics. Um, that includes, for example, so we have here, like we'll post our jobs to, uh, or post the VISTA positions to the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits Job Board. So we're a member of that, we can post the positions there. Um, to aid in your recruitment. Um, we'll also offer webinars and consultations around application processes and things like that. And um, always, probably what's used the most, I think, is phone and in-person support as requested. So anytime you need, have questions or need help, um, that's what we are here for. Uh, you know, the other, sorry, the other thing that um, I realized we didn't put on here, but we do, is that we'll be emailing all of our contacts in our network with um, all of the VISTA position postings and we'll also post to our social media like that. So those are some other, um, you know, centralized recruitment efforts that we'll do as well. 
Um, and then in terms of support for the VISTA members, we offer an or orientation for the cohort and we do try to provide a cohort experience so that the members feel like they are a part of a VISTA program, not just this one VISTA position um, at, at their site. Uh, we do quarterly uh, cohort in-service member development, and so that's things that they can meet in person uh, and attend and do some professional development and reflection around their positions with. Uh, we do two annual site visits, so that includes um, talking with, so either I myself or Jacqueline will come and um, speak with the VISTA and the site supervisor, and then we do that together, so they're about 90-minute meetings, give or take, uh, which we'll do twice a year. And then we have um, the VISTA leader offers a lot of support to our VISTA members. So within both um, Iowa and Minnesota office, we have a VISTA leader. And uh, that person has been a VISTA before, which is really helpful and is a little bit of a peer leader in that regard. And they offer virtual discussions and are able to answer a lot of the members' questions around like, how do I access VISTA benefits? <laughs> How do I get my timesheet turned in? Um, where is that link to the report? All those kinds of things. Um, and again, we can do support calls and visits with members as needed. And then there's an e-newsletter that gets um, sent out. How often is that, Jacqueline? Uh, this year, our VISTA leader is doing it weekly. Okay, so weekly that offers a lot of resources um, and reminders and just kind of think, staying on top of the VISTA experience, I would say. <laughs> All right, I'll hand it over to Jacqueline. Okay, so Kara did a wonderful job of giving us all a little bit of more like background about VISTA and refreshing on our program in general. And I am going to be diving more into the actual recruitment side of things. So we're gonna first talk about uh, what recruitment looks like on My AmeriCorps. So this is the wonderful homepage of My AmeriCorps. <laughs> Um, it's a little bit of a clunky website if you're not familiar with it, but this is the homepage that folks will see when they go on to My AmeriCorps. Um, Carrie, do you want to click the next slide? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't have it. I forgot. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, so we are going to be talking more about the service opportunity listing or the SOL. This is essentially your position description or your job posting that we'll be asking supervisors to create. And so what you're seeing here on the screen is what folks will see as they're looking through all of the AmeriCorps positions on my AmeriCorps. So the, you know, it has the title and then it has a quick little blurb about the position. And I show this because we ask you to write a blurb about your position and this is really what's getting people to actually click on your position. So this is a really important thing to keep in mind and make sure that it's catchy and enticing and hopefully people will actually click on your position. So once they click on your position, this is what they'll see. And this is all of the information that we're going to be asking for you to create uh, within your service opportunity listing. So that includes the um, program description, which is at the top there. Um, there will be, we'll ask you to put a blurb in about your position specifically, and then we have language that we'll use about our um, cohort as a whole, just to give them a little more information about that side of things. Um, and then we'll ask you to write out member duties, so you'll, they'll see that. So this is just kind of like a bullet pointed list of big activities that they'll be working on in their year of service. Um, and then there will be program benefits which will you know, ultimately be the same um, unless you know, you're able to offer housing, for example, we are, we're able to put that on there. Um, so we'll ask you for that. And then service areas, this is um, a great way for people to kind of see the larger you know, pieces of the work that they'll be doing. So I don't know if you can read this one, but this one, for example, um, has hunger, community outreach, health, education, housing, um, and folks on My AmeriCorps are also able to search by these service areas. So being with a little bit liberal with what you choose is not a bad thing because if someone's searching, you know, specifically for health positions, for example, um, we'll, we would want to make sure that health is on there um, in service areas. So you're able to select those when you're creating your service opportunity listing. And then lastly, there's the skills. So again, people are able to search by these. So feel free to be liberal with the skills you're putting on there. 
Um, and again, you'll be able to search or you'll be able to select those as you're creating your SOL. So this is what folks will see. And then they're able to also apply through the My AmeriCorps portal. So um, this is a little, just a little bit more information about the service opportunity listing. We'll be emailing you a template after this webinar. And so we'll just ask you to fill out that form and send it back to us. And then we'll do the posting on the My AmeriCorps website. Um, we ask you to fill this out by March 4th which is two weeks from now, so hopefully that gives you enough time to create some enticing language. Um, and then we also, um, if you're wanting your candidates to email you a resume and cover letter, letter, you can definitely request that and we will put that language in the position description. So um, folks will see that on there and then go ahead and also email you as well with that information. Um, once you send us your SOL, we will review it. There's usually not a lot of edits that we need to make to it, but if there's something, you know, like a big edit we want to make, we'll communicate that with you. We do need to get approval from CNCS. So, um, like I said, we'll edit it a little bit if needed, and then get approval from CNCS, and we will post those positions on My AmeriCorps. We're hoping that all of this work will be done and we'll be able to get your positions live by March 13th. So um, incentive to create the SOL and get it sent over to us and we can um, work on that as soon as possible. And once the positions are live, we will send you the link to your listing on the My AmeriCorps website and you can send that out and start to um, get down to recruitment. So recruitment and your role within that. Um, recruitment is imperative for VISTA positions, uh, especially from your end of things, because like I, like Kara mentioned, we're gonna be doing some centralized recruitment and posting on MCN, for example, but we really have seen that the most successful uh, recruiting strategies are actually coming from the sites themselves. So really do make sure that you're posting it on your website, you're putting it in your newsletters that you send out to your network, um, you're sending it out to folks if you have, you know, connections uh, with, you know, college campuses, send it to their career services, you know, all of that, like really push, push it out and advertise it as you would any position opening at your uh, organization or campus. Uh, make sure you're sharing this with past interns, with volunteers you currently have that you think would be interested. Um, yeah, like I said, any higher ed connections, like that's a really great place to find folks. Um, a lot of people do a year of service, um, kind of as like a gap year or as to get more experience right after they graduate. So, you know, promoting it as a gap year before grad school is a really enticing thing for people. Make sure that you're promoting the benefits that come with VISTA, especially the educational award. Um, obviously, the pay is not going to be the reason people do this. So, making sure that folks know about all of the other benefits that come along with it is really important. Post it on your social media. If you have a current VISTA, make sure that you're, you know, using them, having them tap their network, things like that. And um, if you would like us to create materials, like the one you see on the right, um, this is a post that we had for a site last year. Um, this is, I believe, a Facebook post. And the blurb is the blurb that the supervisor wrote for their service opportunity listing. And the link is on there. So we can create a similar, um, you know, similar materials for you if you'd like. Um, in the past, we've done like a Facebook post that you can use, a Twitter post, and um, a flyer that, you know, kind of lays out even more information about your position. So if you'd like that, please let Kara or I know and we can get that for you. Um, so yes, recruitment is really important, um, especially in this economy. Uh, job, there's lots of jobs right now. And so it is, to be quite honest with you, it's challenging to find um, folks that wanna do this. So it's, it's really important to actively recruit. Okay, so um, I'll be talking a little bit more now about the application process itself. Um, so like I've been saying, candidates will be applying on My AmeriCorps. 
Um, we'll be accepting applications starting, you know, March 13th, hopefully when we'll get all the positions up and posted um, through about June 22nd, if you're looking for someone to start in that July start date, and then July 6th, if you're looking for someone to start in that August start date. So um, we'll be talking more now about the inward facing side of my AmeriCorps, it's called eGrants for folks that have been um, with the Minnesota side of this before, you're well familiar with eGrants, um, which is maybe even worse than the My AmeriCorps website, but we'll get through it together. Um, people, When people apply on My AmeriCorps, um, their application goes into eGrants. So we will be having all of you create uh, a login for eGrants, and, um, and then you're able to actually like receive those emails when people submit their application and you can just go into eGrants and look at them yourself and see if you want to uh, reach out to them for an interview. So when you log into eGrants and you click on, actually, can you go back one slide, Kara? Yes. Um, this is a really small picture, but you'll log in. This is the homepage of eGrants. And then there's a little button towards the bottom that says log, log into eGrants. And OK, and then you can go to the next slide. Thank you. And then you will the on this portal home you click search submitted applications on the left um, and then you're able to actually go to your listing and if you click on that drop down menu you'll see all of the positions that we have on um, our my americorps or on our e-grant side of things so you'll see all of these positions you'll want to find yours because that way you'll actually see the folks that apply to your position specifically if you just look at all of the applicants we have, those are going to be for all of the sites. So you want to really make sure to click on your listing and then click search. And then once you do that, you will see this. <laughs> um, so you'll see all the folks that applied. They'll have, um, you know, the dates of when they applied. And what you'll want to do is you want to click on the applicant's name so you can actually see their full application. If you hit print on the right, you won't see their references, which is a really important part, obviously. So um, please make sure that you click on their name and then you will see this on the next page. Um, so this is what their application is gonna look like. You'll have the basic information and then you know it'd be like education, experience and skills, their community service background. They'll have a motivational statement in there, criminal history, references. So you can go through all of these and click on them and check out um, their full application. So the last tab on here that says sponsor recommendation slash, reje slash rejection, please don't click on this. Um, this is actually how you select somebody and um, we've just found it easiest for, for you all if we go in and do that portion of things. So please don't go in here and select somebody without telling us. So you'll actually submit a, well it's not going to be a Word doc I don't think, I think we're going to be doing a um, just an online survey that will ask you to fill out. And then that will be submitted to us. We'll be able to assign the VAD to your candidate, you know, submit this to CNCS. We'll be able to communicate with our CNCS folks. So please just don't go in here and select anybody. And let us know if you accidentally do. <laughs> and I will say, I know that's a ton of information. Um, we're gonna be sending a PDF with all of this. Um, and specifically with um, eGrants, so you'll be able to reference that um, as you're actually going in there for the first time. So, like I said, your candidate will complete their My AmeriCorps application and they'll submit it to your position. You will get an email when they do that and you're able to review those applications. If you want to interview them, you'll be the one to reach out and, um, you know, offer an interview. We do highly recommend that you interview on a rolling basis. Um, most all um, VISTA sites are doing that and it's very, so what folks do on My AmeriCorps is that they create one application and they're able to just send it off to various sites. And so a lot of times you're not the only site that they're applying to. So if you're not interviewing on a rolling basis and you're not reaching out pretty quickly, they might interview with someone else and then take that position. So we highly recommend that you interview on a rolling basis. Um, and then, you know, reach out to them pretty quickly after they apply. 
Um, we do ask that you inform us before you interview and just let them know or let us know who you're interviewing. And we're going to reach out to your candidates with a terms and conditions and benefits checklist so they can see. Um, while we try to be as transparent as possible about what VISTA is and what you know a year of service looks like, some folks will still apply without realizing that it's you know a full year or the pay or the location. You know, like there's all sorts of things that people just don't see when they apply. So we want to reach out to them first before you you know do this like hour long interview with people and just make sure that they're really aware of you know, all of the terms and conditions that go along with serving in VISTA. So let us know um, who you're interviewing and we will reach out to them and send that information along. So when you're interviewing folks, um, all of the candidates that you interview do need to be asked a uniform set of questions, which makes sense. Um, well, we have sample questions that we're happy to send you and we'll do that, um, but you're welcome to adapt those, you're welcome to use your own. Um, but we'll, we'll send some along if you're wanting those. Um, we do also ask for, that you review that terms and conditions uh, checklist in the interview, um, just as another you know, touch point for that with folks. Um, and we'll send that along as well. Um, if there is any criminal background that they listed in their application, they do have to fill out a criminal history form. Um, there, there's very few uh, criminal, you know, history things that um, would bar someone from doing service, but they do need to disclose that before they start. So just let us know if that's in their application and we can work with you on that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they might be applying to various positions. So just ask them about their timeline, see what they're thinking. Um, that's just good information for you to know. Um, you may ask about their ability to perform perform essential functions, but you cannot ask about health status or disability. And our lovely VISTA this year with um, Iowa and Minnesota Campus Compact created this wonderful document about equitable hiring practice practices. So we'll be sending that along to you as well. And we highly encourage you to check that out because there's lots of really good information in there. And a good example of what a VISTA can accomplish. <laughs> Um, okay, so references are a really important piece, both for, of course, your information and also from the NCS's standpoint. Um, so make sure that you're looking at those in the application, uh, read through them. They're, they do have to have two valid references. So this means that it has to be an employer or, you know, an academic or a volunteer supervisor. Uh, it can't be like a personal connection or a peer or a family. Um, in my experience, the NCS has been pretty strict about that. So if you're seeing um, a reference that you don't think is going to be valid, um, let them know that. Uh, maybe, you know, before you interview or during the interview um, and just let them know that they'll need to get somebody different. And when you let us know who you're interviewing, we'll also look through their application. So we'll have a couple different sets of eyes on it. So that's just good to know. Um, if there are reference concerns, that's fine. Uh, we do just have to, you know, kind of address those with the NCS when we um, ultimately select your candidate. Um, and the last thing I'll say about this is if we're kind of running up on the deadline of recruitment, which is a pretty hard deadline with the NCS, um, and they're not, they don't have a reference in their application, let us know and, you know, we can reach out to their reference and just give them a call or like, you're welcome to do that. Um, but we do need to get those two references in before we can actually select your member. So if it is last minute, just call us and let us know and we can work with you. Okay, so uh, after the interview, once you find somebody that you would like to make an offer to, do that. Um, just please let them know that the offer is contingent on Iowa and Minnesota Campus Compact and CNCS's approval. This is mostly CNCS's approval. Um, they ultimately have the final say. So just make sure that folks know that. Um, we recommend that you give candidates like 24 to 48 hours to respond and to accept, which might sound quick, um, but like I said, they're applying to various 
service positions. And so it's, it's good to, you know, kind of snag the folks that you want. So that's kind of the reason for the quick timeline. This is just um, our guideline. So if you are uncomfortable with that, you don't have to do that, but that's what we found to be most um, effective. And then of course be prepared with your second and third choices because um, people might be taking a different service position. Um, so once someone does accept with you, let us know. Um, well, there's a couple of different things that we need you to complete an email to us. So if you let us, let us know who you've selected, there's a VISTA candidate nomination form, which is essentially just ask us why you think this person is a good fit. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this. Um, we will need them to sign that terms and uh, benefits checklist that we've created. So um, if they did that with you at the interview, like you can send that over to us. We can also work with the VISTA. Um, so we'll need that. Um, so we will review and enter that nomination form into eGrants. So again, that's the last tab that you shouldn't click on in their application and we'll be doing that side of things. Um, we, once we submit that to, um, into eGrants, the candidate will have 24 hours to click accept online. So that's their kind of like final um, acceptance of the program. And so we'll, you know, we'll email them, we'll let them know that they have 24 hours to do that. Um, once they click accept, CNCS will review their application, they'll review that nomination form, they'll review their references, and um, they'll let us know if they have any questions, or more commonly, they'll let us know if they've approved that person to serve. And again, the deadline to have confirmed candidates is June 22nd, if you're looking for that July start date, and July 6th for the August start date. These are firm deadlines. Um, CNCS has a virtual member orientation that folks go through, and they need time to you know, put those people into that um, orientation. So unfortunately, we're not able to get anyone in after those deadlines. So it's really important that you know, we're thinking about those and working within the confines of the program. So this is what the VISTA candidate nomination form looks like. We just wanted to give this to you so you see the questions. This is that form that I'm talking about. Once you select somebody, it's kind of just describing why you think they're a good fit. So it's pretty short. You don't have to write like paragraphs upon paragraphs. Um, you know, like three to four sentences is usually fine. Um, and this is just a way to kind of make our case to CNCS about why that person's a good fit. Okay, so looking forward, this is the schedule that we're working with. Um, we will be sending out site agreements to have you sign and the official notice of awards, we'll, we're working on those and we'll be sending those out um, hopefully this week or maybe early next week. Um, we again are asking for those service opportunity listings and VADs if we're, we're working on the VADs right now, we'll be sending those to you if we have questions or changes that we'd like to make. Um, and then that service opportunity listing that you're creating for us, both of those will be due to us by March 4th. And then we'll be taking those, that was that like a week and a half or something to enter them all into um, the eGrants and the My AmeriCorps side of things, hopefully up by March 13th. And so, at that point, you're able to start recruiting, interviewing, and selecting VISTAs um, starting March 13th through the end of June into early July. Um, we are, as Kara mentioned, we uh, need the on-site orientation and training from you. I know this is looking pretty far in advance, but we do wanna get this on your radar. We'll be hosting a webinar on how to create that uh, orientation and training, and that's gonna be on June 3rd, uh, again at noon. So please save that on your calendars. Um, yet again, as I've said, and as you probably have noticed, the deadlines for selecting VISTAs is very important to us. So again, if your VISTA is starting on July 20th, it's on June 22nd. And then August 3rd start date is gonna be July 6th. So once you have a VISTA confirmed, we will send your invoice to you and um, 
Yeah, so we'll send your invoice to you once the other vista confirmed. And then um, your on-site orientation and training plan is going to be due to us by July 1st. And then your vistas begin July 20th or August 3rd. And just to, so you all know, um, your vista will be going through a mandatory orientation webinar on their first day of service. And in the past, it's always been from 2 to 3 p.m. So assuming that CNCS continues that, um, that's when it will be on their first day. It's imperative that they attend this because there's like an oath form that they have to sign. Um, in order to like officially become a VISTA member and like start getting paid and all of that. So I, we'll talk about that again, but just so you all know right off the bat. And then we'll be having a cohort orientation that we'll be holding in Minneapolis um, August 3rd through 5th. So just another good thing to keep in mind. And then on the right side of the screen, there's just some important websites, the My AmeriCorps website, the eGrants website, um, the supervisor manual, and like Kara said, we'll be sending out a handbook from us soon. So you have those and we send out the PowerPoint. Okay, that was so much information. So I hope no one's feeling overwhelmed. Um, we'll be sending out this webinar and the recording so you have it. And of course, we're happy to answer questions now or later. So we can open it up for questions. Does anyone have any? And everyone's muted, so you might have to unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I will say that Justin commented and reminded us that we also, uh, VISTAs are also have access to additional mental health coverage. Um, and I don't know details about that, so I might let Jacqueline or Justin chime in if there's additional information you want to share there now. Yeah, we have a um, subscription essentially to a service that's able to provide all of our uh, VISTAs and AmeriCorps members with, yeah, mental health support. So I know that there's like texting, but there's also like video chat um, and folks are able to get that for free, essentially no questions asked. Um, so yeah, that's another really great perk of um, serving with us. Thanks for that, Justin. Yeah, and we have had members access that, so it is a good thing to mention maybe up front and not waiting for someone to ask, but uh, uh, mentioning that in the uh, promoting other position too. Wow, did we really do that good of a job explaining all of this? So there's no questions. Okay. Um, we have too many questions. I don't know where to start. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, okay, well, I'll run through the last um, pieces of this slide, and then Kara and I can definitely stay on until one if people want to stay on with questions. Um, so we'll be sending an email following this uh, with the recording of the webinar, a copy of all of these slides. We'll be sending you um, the timeline for recruitment and hiring. Um, an important thing to note is we'll be sending that service opportunity listing template to you that you'll have to fill out for us. Um, we'll also send you instructions for setting up your eGrants account. Uh, the link to my AmeriCorps where candidates can apply. Uh, we'll also send you that terms and conditions checklist that we've been referencing. And then um, that equitable hiring practices document that we have. And then coming in the near future uh, will be those suggested VAD revisions. Um, and then your service opportunity listing link once that's all up and running by March 13th. Um, and then like I mentioned previously, the host site agreement and official notice of award are also coming soon. So thank you all for attending. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Um, and Kara and I can stay on if anyone has questions. Yeah. And also I will say just very quickly, if there's anyone who has like really significant advice after they've done this the supervision yeah. for a while, uh, things they wanna share that might be helpful to the whole group, um, if you wanna share that now, or I mean, we know we're letting people go. So, um, you know, letting us know at some point and we can compile that information and make sure we're giving it to um, new supervisors because no one can speak to it as well as those who have done it. Okay. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.